shifts in the supply curve. Now for this you need to imagine yourself as a supplier. Um, if you imagine yourself as a farmer that tends to be, uh, be quite a simple example. And imagine a situation where the, the raw materials uh, for the, the crop that you're producing goes up. So let's say you, you need fertiliser um, to put on your, your carrots. Um, if the price of fertiliser goes up, that's going to have an impact on your ability to supply carrots at certain price levels. Um, equally, if the, if the price of labour goes up, that's going to have an impact. Or, if there's an improvement in technology, that's going to have an impact. And all of these things can cause shifts in the supply curve. So if we imagine things that might cause a shift in the supply curve to the right, S to S1, the kind of things that might make that happen would be perhaps um, a cut in the cost of labour or maybe labour being more productive, perhaps a drop in the cost of raw materials, so a cheaper fertiliser, or maybe an improvement in technology. So um, you've bought a fantastic new tractor and it makes uh, life a lot simpler and you can get carrots out of the ground a lot more quickly than you could do in the past. So in that situation on this diagram, the original price was at price P and quantity Q and equilibrium point E. But what's happened here is because you have um, improved productivity um, and uh, cost of raw materials has fallen and you've got this new tractor, at every single price level you are now willing and able to produce more. But the impact of that is you end up with this, this excess supply situation and that tends to push the price down to a new equilibrium point. P1 to Q1. And you would have witnessed this in your own life. If there's a, a particularly good harvest for, say, um, apples or strawberries, and more is supplied, then the price will tend to be lower in the shops. Uh, as more people produce um, uh, tablet PCs or mobile phones, as more companies are doing, doing that and there's more competition, with that increase in supply, prices tend to get pushed down as the ability to provide broadband falls. Prices tend to get pushed down and more is supplied and demanded. So, you know, generally for a, a consumer, it's a good thing if suppliers get, get more efficient because um, prices tend to fall. Now, the opposite can happen, of course, if the, if the cost of labour goes up or the cost of a raw material goes up, then the supply curve can, can go to the left. So if the, the price of, of oil rises, oil is a raw material in making paint, um, so if the price of oil rises, then that will make paint more expensive. Or if uh, you, you raise a, a minimum wage, um, you can argue that that puts up the cost of labour and again that means that the supply curve may shift to the left. So there are these, these constant movements going on the whole time and uh, it's sometimes difficult to work out whether it's a demand or a supply curve. But the supply curve is all about the suppliers ability to supply the product is the things that affect them and the demand curve is all about uh, uh, the consumer's uh, willingness and ability to buy. So hopefully if you keep that in your head you'll be able to work out which curve is moving where.